Watch Me Grow Episode 2. So this week I'm trying the uh, pin press out, which is where, you know, when you're benching, you start out at a specific level, you have the pins set to a specific height, and then you start from there. It's coming from a dead stop. And what this helps you to do is to focus more on your triceps, you know, the lockout part of the movement. We all know the lockout part for most people, probably, you know, 80% of people is the hardest part um, because it involves, especially for me and for torso dominant people who have a really hard time, you know, using the tricep part of the movement because our triceps are a lot weaker than our chest is. So, you know, the bottom, we spring right back up because you can use that momentum. Once you get to the top, that's where everything stops. So for me, this was a good way to try out, you know, I've, I've done these movements before, but I want to start using them more in my routine. Um, I'm thinking of doing this in a sort of like weekly periodization type thing where I will do, the first week I do regular bench press, second week I do uh, pin press, third week I go back to regular bench press, and then fourth week I do floor press which I think the floor press is an amazing movement for getting your bench uh, better because this it is sort of that overriding the biological law of accommodation thing where you're trying to uh, mix up the movement so you don't you know get stale in one movement um, and it'll just help my bench press a lot. Uh, I started out with one plate and then uh, my girlfriend or my fiance tried it out right after that Amanda and uh, she did 10, which was interesting because she had done three reps previously without the pins. And then after that, I think I messed around with 205 and I did four reps. Actually, I worked out today. I didn't record that uh, workout, but I ended up doing um, 205 for five reps, which means I'm already getting a little bit better. Um, and I'm only doing three sets for my benching um, per workout, but I'm doing it three times a week. I'm trying to get that frequency in, but I'm not trying to kill myself with the volume. And then for a finisher, I tried to crank out 225. Uh, I only ended up doing uh, two reps and they were kind of ugly. They were a little bit slow, but it's just to help me get that straining in because straining is an important part of getting stronger. You have to learn how to struggle basically with the movement because it's a very skill-based thing. You know, same thing with squats. I'm doing uh, three sets and I'll do, you know, three times a week. This workout uh, was really hard because it was the first time ever doing front squats and it sucked. Uh, I, you know, everyone had always told me front squats suck and I was like, ah, you know, we'll see. And they do. Yeah. Um, so as you can see from the footage, I think I only recorded one set and it was the 90, uh, 90 pound set, I think I'm pretty sure. And it was just ugly. Like you can see, I'm kind of tipping over. Like I, I feel very uneven. I'm still getting used to like having the bar right here. It looks like I'm kind of leaning forward a little too much. I should be staying more upright. That's probably a core issue. I've always had a weak core. You know, like I said, just I'm, I'm trying to get into squats. You know, I'm trying to get better. Uh, I'm probably going to let the front squats take a back burner until I get, you know, decent at regular back squats. Uh, and then I'll probably try to progress a little more. I'll, I'll keep trying them out every once in a while, though. And then I did some standard barbell rows. So I like to do these a little more upright because I feel like... Um, the more parallel you are to the floor, the more that you'll be activating your upper back. Like I want to be working my lats the most and I don't want to be working, you know, the whole, um, you know, rhomboids and traps and all that kind of stuff. That, that kind of stuff is for later. You know, I do want bigger traps, but when I do a rowing movement, I want to be using my lats. Like that's the, that's my prime focus. Really bad camera angle here. I'll have to, I'll have to admit that. But uh, yeah, I just cranked out a few sets. They, no big deal. I think it was like three sets. And I did like seven reps each time kind of thing. And then I moved on to something I've been trying differently lately, which is uh, endurance back training. And so what I used to do when I, I had a bigger back, back when I used to work out a lot more, and then before I had this year where I took the year off, um, I would just kind of crank out pull-ups whenever I was in the gym, like just go over, you know, do a couple um, reps and then go do something else, come back, do a couple of reps. I would usually, usually end up doing about 50 reps per workout kind of thing. And this is what I'm trying to kind of save on time because I'm timing myself. So I'll start the timer or my fiance will start the timer and then I'll put a 25 pound plate on, which is very light, but you know, it's all, I'm, I'm not as strong as I used to be. So that's all I have right now. And then I'll try to do 25 reps as quickly as I can. And it's very hard. I think you should try this. Try it with an appropriate weight. You know, if you're a lot stronger than me, you know, by all means, 
make the weight go up. If you want, you could do more reps and less weight. Either way, try it out because I think this is I think this is important for lat growth, especially if you're if you have a hard time focusing on your lats. Because in my opinion, the lats are the hardest to gain the you know mind muscle connection in because they're just so you're not used to flexing your lats. You know, it's easy flex your biceps. That's an easy thing. You know, flex your chest. You just kind of squeeze it like this. It, it works out. But flexing your lats, like it took me a very long time to figure that out. And so while you're doing a pull up, a lot of people, you know, especially me, like even as someone who did pull ups a lot and knows how to flex my back, I still get this like burn in my forearms. So for me, this endurance training, you know, because when you try heavier weight with heavy pull ups. You end up just like straining a lot and yeah you're working your back and yeah I got a pretty big big back out of it before but I feel like you can be losing that sort of mind muscle connection that you could gain just from getting like up this pump type training and what it helps you to do is to because a lot of times when you focus on hypertrophy you end up losing the um, progressive overload which is you know where you increase the reps or sets or um, weight in each workout sometimes when you're not doing strength training it's harder to track that you know, but this is a good way because you can see that you're getting faster on the time. For example, the first time I did it, I got about eight minutes and 40 seconds. Second time I did it, I think it was 7.11 or something like that. I can't remember. You'll see on the screen. That's a pretty big jump. And obviously, you, you know, when you first start something, you're going to get faster at it. It turned out that I was just doing single reps at a time because I was getting so tired. <laughs> and so I was trying not to tire myself out like I did the first time. I'm not going to do it every single workout. Um, but it's just something to try out when you feel like you stagnated on like strength training, you know, doing deadlifts, doing heavy weighted pull-ups, you know, doing heavy rows. Maybe it's time to try, you know, and it also builds up your cardiovascular skill and, and your endurance as well. So I'd say just something to try out if you guys are interested in that. Um, that's about it for this episode. I'll ha probably have another one coming out soon. Uh, thanks for watching.